Life is lived in seasons with transitions. Here are six simple insights to help you prepare and transition well through the seasons God takes you. All right. So this morning uh, to lead us in our declaration as uh, Sandhya Raj will come. She's one of our young leaders from APC East. Uh she's going to bring an exhortation and then uh, lead us in our declaration. Sandhya. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Oh, I'm super nervous. Please excuse me if <laughs> my voice shakes. Uh and a warm welcome to everyone who's watching us online. um 2020 uh, the last sunday of the year what a year it has been it has forced us to do our own dishes clean our own homes spend a lot of time with our families and it has also um broken a lot of securities that we thought uh, are going to keep us safe um our life sh- life insurance did not cover things that we wanted it to cover uh, some of us lost our jobs some of us lost our promotions that we thought is going to secure our life but one thing that stood firm um in all of this is god's promises and his faithfulness let's read um this one verse from hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful it's very clear that god is telling us to hold fast for the confession not because of our might not because we can hold fast to our confession but because he who promised is faithful um i think one verse that trended uh, in 2020 is um, a thousand may fall on your side and 10000 on your right and nothing shall come near you well i, I don't think we should wait for um, a 2020 to happen for us to hold on to god's promises or declare such verses God gave this verse to us thousands of years ago even before he knew or we knew that covid was going to happen or some disaster of this sort is going to happen but the promise that we use the promise verse that we use is already there in the word of god and today i just want to reiterate that everything that we need i don't know what is what 2021 is going to hold for us i don't know what the next hour is going to hold for us is this mic going to work is pastor going to preach i know not anything but one thing is for sure is god's promises is already there for any situation that arises be 2020 another um, uh, another year of staying at home another year of fighting our battles or another year of blessings our thankfulness our blessings our promises everything's already available to us and i think we should take hold of it and confess it with boldness and say that our god is always available for us and he is going to keep our promises because he's faithful so let's declare god's word hold our bibles high up in the air for 2021 a beautiful year this is god's word this is god speaking to me i am who god says i am i can do what god says i can do I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender i present myself as a new wine skin to receive the new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me god releases new things and a new work of his spirit in me and through me in jesus name amen thank you sandhya thanks all right just before we get into god's word there's just a quick word of testimony 
Um, so this is from a, a young lady, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily giving all the details here, but um, in 2015, uh, the doctor had um, informed her that she will not have children uh, due to medical conditions. And uh, she's not from a Christian family, uh, but she was praying to Jesus. And uh, what happened was last year, this 2019 Christmas, uh, she came to our Christmas service. So we were in the other building, uh, 2019. Uh, she came for a Christmas Day service. And at the service, she prayed and said, Lord, by next Christmas, I want to come for the Christmas service, either pregnant or with a baby. And last Sunday, she and her husband came. They didn't come inside the service. They were outside with the baby, two and a half months old. And uh, they came. They said, you know, we want you to pray. We want you to dedicate uh, the child uh, in the name of Jesus. And so uh, they waited outside. Uh, at, the, at the end of the service, we went out there and, uh, and just prayed. So I'm just... Uh, I just wanted to share that testimony and uh, just to know, share with you the, the goodness of God uh, in their lives. Um, you know, typically at the end of the year, we invite people to share their testimonies uh, of God's faithfulness in their lives through the course of the year. Also, the word of the Lord that we release at the beginning of the year, if you have testimonies that, uh, that relate to that, you could... Um, uh, email that to me. So we have received some uh, others. If you want to, you're welcome to email your testimonies. You just have to send it to testimony at apcwo.org. And uh, now we will try to share a summary of as many testimonies as we can on uh, on uh, January 1st service. Uh, but, you know, we may not be able to cover all the testimonies. We'll do the best we can. However, it's good that you share you know, what the goodness of God, whatever God's done in your life. So we encourage you to do that. All right, this morning, I want to just talk to us uh, briefly about transitioning. All of us um, recognize that, you know, life is lived in seasons with transitions. So you want to just summarize, how do you live life? You live life in seasons with transitions. Transitions are an unavoidable, inevitable part of our journey through life. And what do we mean by transitions? It means moving from one stage to another. We all have to do that. Uh, Looking back at this year, 2020, all of us globally went through transitions. You know, all of a sudden, uh, how we lived life changed. And so we went under or went into a lot of restrictions. Happened globally, transition. And then uh, we are beginning, and I'm not saying it's over, so don't miss quote what I'm saying. I'm just saying we're beginning in some sense to come out of that life under restrictions. We've been able to now open up our services, have uh, you know, attendance to some measure, and to some measure, slowly beginning to transition out of uh, a life that was under a uh, lot of restrictions and so on. So again, we're making transitions. The end of a calendar year and the beginning of another calendar year, again, signifies transition. For some of us, it makes no difference. It's just another day. <laughs> you go to sleep on 31st, you wake up on 1st. No big deal. But for some of us, or for others, 2020 might be a big year of transition because probably you're going to get married 2021. Probably you're going to move from uh, college into the workplace or some other uh, major transition awaiting you in 2021. So waking up on January 1st, 2021 is a big deal. It's like, hmm, this is that year. 
that that is going to happen in my life. Something big is going to happen. I like this, you know, all kinds of transitions that we journey through. Typically, you go to school, school to college is a transition, college to workplace is a transition, a singlehood to being married is a transition. Uh, going sometimes from one job to another is a transition. Relocating from one city to another is a transition. All of these are transitions in life that many of us will experience, will go through. And uh, sometimes there are some transitions that happen because of difficult situations. Like Sandhya mentioned, a loss of a job. That's a difficult situation. It forces people into a transition. You, what's next? You've got to think of it. The loss of a loved one. It's a difficult transition. You've journeyed together and there's a full stop in their life. You have to continue. That's a transition. Uh, and there are other difficult situations where uh, we have to transition. We have to move. Keep moving. The beautiful thing is this. The Bible tells us our times are in God's hands. That's Psalm 31 verse 15. So let's all say that together. My times are in his hands. You know when you say times, it means all the seasons of life with the transitions included are in his hands. My times, that means my seasons and the transitions, are in his hands. Your life are in his hands. And Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21, Daniel says, He changes times and seasons. Not the sun, the moon, or the stars. God changes Times and seasons. Our times are in his hands. And God, whether in your individual life or in the life of a local church or in the life of a nation or in the life of nations, God orchestrates changes of times and seasons. So, you know, as believers, we can be in this place of... Uh, Comfort or strength or confidence, even through transitions, knowing that our times, our seasons and transitions are in the hands of our God. And that's beautiful. That's wonderful to know that the transitions of our lives are in his hands. Now, you know, for some people, transition is like no problem. They pack up and move. It's very easy for them. It doesn't bother them. But there is also a danger in that. For example, if you have too many transitions in your job, when you go for your next interview, they say, hey, how come in five years you've changed so many jobs? Right? So that could be a problem if you have too many transitions. And so you've got to be a little careful. But for others, transitions can be a very difficult thing. I find it difficult to let go because... They're so uh, comfortable with what is there. Or they find it very scary, very uh, fearful of stepping into the unknown. Oh, I don't know what awaits me. And so transitions for some people can be a very difficult thing. A very painful experience for themselves. And then they make it very painful for everybody else around them. So, what I want us to do today is just to consider a few insights from Scripture that will help us prepare and transition well in life. Transitions are unavoidable. They're inevitable. They will happen. But you and I can learn how to transition well. Are you with me so far? So the message is very simple. Just few insights on how to transition well. 
Some things that you and I can do, uh, especially as you're preparing for a new year, uh, looking to transition, and then we, you know, we don't know what awaits us all in 2021, but if there are going to be transitions in your life, here are some things that you could use uh, to transition well. So there are many scriptures that we could go to to you know, draw insights on transitioning. And uh, one of the classic texts is in Joshua chapter 1. So we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read the first 11 verses because here is a transition point in the life of a man called Joshua. For about 40 years, he's been working or serving along or under Moses. It's been great. Moses is in charge and, you know, Joshua's just right there along serving with Moses 40 years, about 40 years. But now, transition's happening. Moses is dead. Now, just before Moses died, and you read about this in Numbers chapter 27, uh, just before Moses died, Moses appointed Joshua as his successor, and a few months after that, he died. So transition's happening and we will just look at a rec that record in Joshua chapter 1. We'll read verses 1 through 11 and then just draw some insights from here. So we're going to read the entire passage. Please follow along with me uh, in your Bibles. And there are, I think the scriptures will also come up on the screen. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory." No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of, a good, of, and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all, that the, all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but, I, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. So, some insights on how to transition well based or, and I will just use this text as, uh, 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 and this text and also make reference to other texts as we go along on how to transition well. Number one, that we're going to summarize this message in six simple keywords, right? Number one, first keyword is reflect. Reflect. To reflect means you just pause. And remind yourself of what has already happened. Reflect. How do you transition well? Number one, reflect. Remind yourself of how God has led you thus far. Look back. God told Joshua, Joshua, it's time for you to transition. One of the things I want you to remember is this. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And you can just imagine Joshua's thinking. 
as God was with Moses. So he goes back to those days when Moses came before Pharaoh and said, the great I am has sent me, let my people go. And I can just imagine him going through all the miracles that he, you know, that took place in the land of Egypt. He goes through what happened on that first Passover night. Wow, what an amazing thing happened. He goes through the crossing of the Red Sea. He goes through all the, all the things he saw, those, these, these, you know, 30, 40 years, 39, 40 years in the wilderness. All the miracles, how God provided the manna, the quail, the water, as I was with Moses. I am with you. The God of the past is also the God of the present and of the future. So reflect. God, you have been with me. You have not failed me. You have not failed us. You have been with us. Therefore, you will continue to be with us. So remind yourself of what God has done. Think of all his goodness, all his works. God has been faithful. And part of a reflection also, especially at a personal level, is to reflect on the things you did right so far. The things you did right. What are the things that you did right in your journey so far? Consolidate those things in your life. Yeah, those are good things I did. Good. But part of reflection also means you reflect on the things you didn't do right. Things, mistakes you made. And let the mistakes you made make you wiser. Learn from those things. It's also part of our reflection. So these are things I did. I shouldn't have done or I should have done differently. You learn from that. You're preparing for transition. First one, reflect. The second, I think it's going to be a short sermon. Number two is renew. Let's all say that together. Renew. Transition can be demanding. Most transitions are challenging times. Not Sometimes it may be very easy, but most transitions are demanding. They're not easy. And what does God tell Joshua? Three times at least in this passage we've read. God is telling Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Joshua, this is... A new phase of your life. You're transitioning. So one of the things you must do. Is you must be strong. And courageous. Because that's what's required of you. But where does that come from? It comes through. Renewing our. Strength. Or reviving. Refresh yourself. Renew yourself. Refresh yourself. As you prepare for transition. Renew. Now we all know how to renew ourselves spiritually. We know the Bible teaches us, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They'll walk and they'll not faint. So we know how to renew our strength. Go wait upon God. Take that extra time. Especially as you know transition is coming. Take time intentionally just to wait on God. So that you can be renewed in your inner person. So that when you face these challenging times. These demanding times. The demands of transition. You'll have what it takes to make the transition. One of the things that I share very often with people in, in, you know, in various contexts, I, I use a simple statement. I say, always operate from a place of strength. Always operate from a place of strength. So that means you need to do 
what is needed to get yourself into a place of strength first and then operate from that. If you really want to be successful, always operate from a place of strength. Now, some people will say, well, you know, God takes the weak things of the world to confound the wise. Yes, but he didn't tell you to be weak. He told you to be strong. He does use the weak things, but what did he tell us to do? He told us, be strong. So you always operate from a place of strength. So what does that mean? How does it translate to practice? For example, if you're planning to get married, one of the things you need to do is be financially strong. I have no money, but I have love and fresh air. I want to get married. Tell that to your spouse. <laughs> so what do you do? First, put yourself financially in a place of strength. Because that's what is required once you get into marriage. Just an just example. Or whatever it takes. I want to start a business. Okay, great. That's a great idea. You want to have a business. But first put your place. If you want to really be successful, put yourself in a place of strength to start that business. What, it is, what does that mean? It may mean, you, you know, of course, you need finances to start a business. But you may need certain skills. You may need certain network. Whatever you need. Put yourself in a place of strength. Then start. But in order to get there, you need to renew. Are you listening? Renew. Be strong and very courageous. Because transition demands that. You've got to put yourself in that place of strength. The third word that I want to use here that will help us in transition, how to transition well, is to refocus. Refocus. So what's the first one? Reflect. Second? Renew. Third, refocus. Now what happens? Is sometimes in the situations leading up to a transition, or while you're going through a transition, our focus can get shifted. As a focus on the main thing, you begin to shift focus. Or our focus can get blurred. You're not seeing clearly. Because of those situations leading up to the transition or in the transition. Your vision gets blurred. And so we need to refocus. You know, it's like whether it's your camera or whether it's just your visual. You know, okay, let me see that again clearly. I want to see that clearly. So refocus. And that's what happened to the people of Israel. You know earlier on that they took their eyes of the promises of God and put their eyes on the giants. And they said, God, there are giants in the land. The focus shifted. And so they lost 39 years. That's a long time to lose for not focusing for not staying focused but now God is calling Joshua back and he says Joshua I want you to remember my promises focus on what I have given you meditate in my word day and night bring your focus back on my word not on the giants or the problems Focus back. So it's not just for Joshua. It's for the whole people. Guys, get your focus back. What did I tell you? This land I promised you. Get your focus back on my promise. Get your focus back on my word. Meditate in the day and night. Refocus. Because things may distract us, disturb our focus, blur our vision. Now, you know, in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verses I think it's verses 22 and 23. Uh, Jesus uses the analogy of the human body to teach us something about vision. He says, the lamp of the body is the eye. That means what gives light to you as a person is your vision. If the eye is good, the body is full of light. That means if you have a clear vision, you have light. Light means you can walk in. You know the way in which you walk. But if the eye is bad, 
the whole body is full of darkness. That means if you don't have a clear vision, your walking is like somebody walking in darkness. So that tells us the importance of a clear vision, of a clear focus. If you have a clear vision, you have a clear focus, it's like somebody walking in the light. If you don't have a vision, you don't have focus, it's like somebody walking in the dark. You don't know where you're going. And Jesus told us that in Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. So that's the importance of being very clearly focused. Your vision is clear. You know where you're going. So that's why during interviews and all, they ask people, what's your vision? What's your life vision? Uh, I don't know, Pastor. Anything. Then, if you don't have a clear vision, what will happen? Where are you going? So, focus. Refocus on God's call, God's purpose, God's vision for you. Refocus. Because sometimes our focus can get blurred can get disturbed. So refocus. Zero in. And God was telling Joshua, meditate in my word. Get your focus back on my promise. My promise to you is that this land must be yours. And for the people. How can we tell if, you know, we've lost focus? You can tell if you've lost focus, if you're paying attention to small things that don't matter rather than the big things that do matter. That means you're distracted. And so focusing on the big thing, the main thing, you're occupying yourself with lots of small things. You're busy. You're busy with the things that don't matter. You've lost focus. So busyness itself is not an indication of focus. So don't say, I'm busy. What are you busy with? Are you busy with the main thing? Or are you busy with lots of small, small, small things? If you're busy with lots of small things, these are not the main thing. You've lost focus. Get your focus back. What's the main thing? Oh, I wonder if I should have been here this morning. <laughs> you can tell if you have lost focus. If you're distracted and disinterested, you've lost focus. Because the main thing captivated you and you had passion, you had zeal. There was something, uh, there was fuel inside your tank, so to speak. You were energized, you had the fire inside you. No fire is gone, the tank is empty, no energy, no zest, no focus. Are you with me? Refocus. Get it back. And God was telling Joshua, Joshua, you got to focus. You know, it's important in, in the life of the kingdom. There are some priorities. Jesus put it like this in Matthew 6, 33. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. So there's a focus involved. First must be God's kingdom and his righteousness. Focus. There's a very interesting prayer in Psalm 119, verse 37. It's, uh, I didn't include it in the PowerPoint, so uh, I'll just read it for us. Psalm 119, verse 37. The psalmist prayer is like this. He says, Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. So let's all say that together. Turn my eyes away. From looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Let's say it one more time. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Very interesting prayer. God, get my focus off of unnecessary things, worthless things. And revive me in your way. So revival requires 
refocus. We pray for revival. So God, we want revival. Well, revival requires refocus. Take your eyes off of worthless things, unnecessary things. Focus it on God so that we can be revived in His way. So take my eyes of unnecessary things. Focus, refocus on what's important. So we need to check up on our vision. Uh, we need to clear out things, interfere with vision, and realign, refocus on our primary assignment. Number, number four, just a few more things here. Number four is realign. Realign. That means... Come back into alignment to the main path. You know, and uh, you can try to imagine this. Even if you, you know, even if it's a few degrees, if you imagine a straight line, okay, that's a little drawing there. Imagine a straight line, and just you start off with just a few degrees away, just 10 degrees away. Okay, the deviation is very small in the beginning. But you keep going on that 10 degree deviation for a long time. Just keep journeying on that. Soon we will find that we are way off from the original path. The deviation gets bigger. So just a small 10 degree variation. So way off now because you've journeyed. A long time. So realignment means I need to get back to the original path. God's plan. God's purpose for your life. Get back to it. Realign. And that's what happened to the people of Israel. They came so close to the promised land. They were on the east side of Jordan. All they had to do was cross the river. And they were stepping into the land of promise. So as part of that, they said, you know, send the people to 10 spy, uh, 12 spies to survey the land, come back. But then what happened? They got distracted. And instead of going in and possessing the land, they started, they went back. And then they, all they did was they were circling around Mount Seir for 39 years. Now, it was a mountain range, Mount Seir, about 70 kilometers north to south 30 kilometers east to west so they kept circling that for 39 years round and round the same mountain range sceneries were changing fruits here there all those things scenery was changing but their location was not where they should have been 39 years gone So, God tells Joshua very clearly, Joshua, I want you to go and set foot in the land. And every land that the sole of your feet will walk on, I've given it to you. That's, you need to get back to that. And he's once again giving Joshua clear indications. That's the territory. From the river Euphrates in the north to the great river Nile in the south. This is the place I want you. You need to get in there. Get aligned to my plan. So, as you are and you and I are preparing for transition. If there have been areas in our lives where we have deviated from God's original plan. Realign. Realign. Get back into it. And once again, sometimes the pressure of preparing for transition or going through transition can distract us. So we constantly look and say, God, where am I? Where do I need to realign? And you know what God tells Joshua? He says, Joshua, don't turn from my word either to the left or to the right. Zero degree tolerance. Absolute precision required. 
stay on course not to the left not to the right stay on the original path my word get into alignment are you with me this morning realign get back take some time to think god are there areas in my life i may have shifted a little bit here a little bit there i need to get back into alignment what does god want for my life realign last two things finish very quickly number 5 is reposition look let's review what was number 1 reflect number 2 number 3 number 4 and number 5 reposition reposition means go from one position into the next reposition yourself because transition most often requires repositioning that's what transition is about repositioning your life you were here now you got to go there and that's what happened with Joshua like we said for about 40 years he was a follower now god is saying that role is changing from today you are the leader you have to reposition yourself you can't be behind somebody you have to be the one in front reposition and so transition often requires repositioning and you and i have to reposition ourselves for that transition you know and and we can see Joshua doing that as he repositions himself but this is difficult like we said in the beginning for some of us because you have to let go of what is comfortable and you've got to step into what is unknown but you and i can prepare well and in Joshua's case we could say that maybe he had the opportunity to prepare himself for 40 years maybe we don't know but definitely from the time that Moses appointed him as a leader he must have been thinking boy now no turning back i have to step in one day i have to do this and he may have had at least those 8 months probably to prepare himself that time from his appointment to the time Moses died at least that time he had if not longer prepare himself to reposition now repositioning can be very important and we i'll just reference a few examples from the bible one example is that of elijah and you read about this in first kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 9 god's word came to elijah and said elijah go to the brook cherith i will take care of you there so he goes there and just so amazing a raven comes and feeds him and he has water to drink and this is famine but elijah is taking care of god is supernaturally providing for elijah at that time but then the brook dries up i'm and i'm imagining the raven stops coming so god what's happening you sent me here but now god tells elijah elijah I want you now to go to Zarephath. Because over there I've got a widow woman and she's going to take care of you. What if Elijah was like one of us crazy matics, you know, or charismatics? <laughs> These crazy matics <laughs> who say no. God sent me to Cherith and in Cherith I will stay and in Cherith I will die. God bless you, die. <laughs> God is telling the God who sent you to Cherith is now sending you to Zarephath. He's repositioning you. And if you don't reposition yourself, you will die. And it's not God's fault. Yes. 
the word of the Lord came, told you to go to, uh, to Cherith. But now God is saying, go to Zarephath. So God, you mean a widow woman going to take care of me? I like the raven God. No, go down there. See, repositioning will determine whether or not you receive God's supply into your life. I think about John the Baptist and his disciples. You read about this in John chapter 1 and uh, verses 35 to 37. John has his disciples. And it's very interesting when you look at these verses in John 1, 35 to 37. The Bible says, on one particular day, John pointed to Jesus and said, behold the Lamb of God. And the Bible is so, I'm just trying to imagine this. The Bible says, and the disciples of John left him and followed Jesus. What a picture. I mean, they were disciples of John. He baptized them. He must have done whatever things for them. But when he pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, they left John and they followed Jesus. They repositioned themselves. Some of us may say, I'm a Baptist. This is a joke. Don't get angry with me. I'm a Baptist. I will die a Baptist. Ah, God is doing a new thing. Move with God. Reposition yourself. We have to learn to let go of the past. Step into the new thing God is doing. So we can journey with God. Are you with me? Repositioning is important if you're going to stay current with the move of God. The last thing we need to do as we prepare for transition is reinvent. Uh, we could use a better word, but I'm just using this. Reinvent. Reinvent yourself. Uh, I'll explain what it means. So repositioning may require you to reinvent yourself. A better way to put it is every new season requires a new you. So let's say it together. Every new season requires a new you. That means there's something about you that needs to change when you transition. In this particular case, like we mentioned, Joshua not only had to reposition himself to be up in front, but he had to be a new person. He was no longer a follower. He was now a leader. This was the new Joshua. Not the follower Joshua, the leader Joshua. A new person. Reinvented. I'm just using contemporary word. But it's a new person. And so repositioning requires you and me to be different than from what we were before. We take all that we've learned in the past, the experiences, the learnings, the skills we've developed. We take all of that and then we say, God, with these things that you've put in my life, I'm becoming this new person that you want me to be for this new season of my life. Because every new season requires a new you. Something has to change in your life and mine. To match the season into which God is bringing us. We can't be the same old person. So reinvent yourself. Sometimes we may need to intentionally acquire new skills. Learn new things etc. So that we could be what God wants us to be. So let's quickly review these six things. And then we will pray. Worship team, you can come up, please. So how do we transition well? Number one, let's go, to th go through it together. Reflect. Renew. Refocus. Realign. Reposition. Reinvent. And we can see all of these things. And I've, I know I've used contemporary words. And, but we can see all of this in this passage here. That's how God tells Joshua, Joshua, get ready for this new assignment, for this new thing, for this 
this, this new season of your life. Things have changed. You've got to transition into this. And here are some insights. I'm not saying this is everything, but some things that will help us as we transition. So in the next few days between today and January 1st, I want to invite all of us. Go through those six things. Take some time to reflect on your life so far, maybe even specifically in 2020, what has God done? Reflect. Renew yourself. Take some time to wait on the Lord. Most of us may be on vacation or you have a little extra time. So spend more time just in prayer, in the word, listening to God, communing with him. Renew yourself. Refocus. God, what are you really calling me to do? What is your purpose for my life? What should I be focusing on? Refocus. Have I got distracted? I'm not saying all of us have, but I'm just saying it's good to check up. Have I got distracted? Is the main thing still the main thing in my life? Do I need to make some changes to refocus? Realign. If in case I have started deviating in any way from the original plan of God, purpose of God, call of God, my life, let me come back. Take some time to check up. And if you need to make changes, do it. You've got some time to realign. Do you need to reposition yourself? You need to change where you are so that you can move into where God wants you to be. Maybe he wants some of us to do that. So be ready to reposition yourself. Do you need to reinvent yourself? Do you need to change in some way? Take some time just to reflect. Ask the Lord, what are the changes I need to make? So that we can transition well. Not only into this calendar change of 2020 to 2021, but in each of our lives for what God has in store for us. We will journey into it well. Amen. Let's rise to our feet, please. We're going to take some time just to wait on the Lord as we wait on Him. Let the Lord speak to you. If He is putting something in your heart, reminding you of certain things in your life, just pray. If He's calling you to do any of these things that we spoke about this morning, take some time to respond and say, Okay, God, I'll do that. I'm saying yes to that. God is a personal God. He's speaking to you by His Spirit. He invites you and me to respond personally. So take some time to do that before we close this morning. So Father, we're just praying that you help each of us, God, to prepare for transitions. Maybe some are going through transition maybe for some of us transition awaits us is at the door it's nearby help us to be aware to recognize to prepare ourselves so that we can transition well and to step into what you have in store. Father, speak to each of us by your Holy Spirit. 
and show us how we can prepare for transition.
Thank you, God. Whatever the transition is for you and me, there's one thing we can be assured. Or there are many things we can be assured. God is for us. He's with us. And he will always do good to us. Always. Amen. We can rest assured of that. We may not understand everything about the transition, about the changes. But one thing we rest assured, our God, the God who was, He is, and He'll remain. Amen. The God who was with us in the past, is with us, and He'll continue in the years ahead. That's certain he's faithful that's assured so whatever transition is happening has happened is going to happen in each of our lives the goodness of God is always assured it's always a good God he's for you he's not against you he's by you he doesn't leave you doesn't forsake you and me he's with us amen and through our God, we shall do valiantly. Through our God, we shall do victoriously. Through our God, we will come out triumphant. Through our God, we will overcome. Through our God, we will walk into the land of His blessing. Through our God, we will see our Jerichos come down. Through our God, we will see the giants collapse. Through our God, we will see our mountains taken. Through our God. Amen. This is a sword. This is guaranteed. Through our God, this will happen. Through our God, we shall do valiantly. You will do valiantly. And people will see what the Lord has done. Because He is the God who puts a new song in our mouth. A new song in our mouth. And the Bible says many will see it. And be glad. Many will see it and turn to the Lord. Our God is the God of the new song. He's the God who puts a new song in our mouth. A new song to sing. And people will see it. People will see it. And they will praise the name of the Lord our God. Amen. So we go with that assurance. He's our God. He's with us. Nothing to fear. Nothing to be afraid. The God of the past is the God of the present. He's the God of our future. Amen. 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 We're going to close. I want you to go with this assurance, with rejoicing in your heart. God is with you. He's with you. He's for you. And His good plans are being unfolded in your life. His good plans are being released in your life goodness of God will become evident in your life. You go with that assurance. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit continue with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.